Hardwood Ski and Bike is a venue we're very familiar familiar with. Uh, we've had our national championships there the last two years, and the venue hosted Canada Cups uh, for the last 23 some years. So it's a venue we're familiar with. It's just located outside of Barrie. Uh, the team will be heading there uh, the, uh, the satellite accommodation uh, after this press conference. So we're very happy that uh, they took time on uh, on their precious uh, schedule. All, all of them flew from uh, World Cup yesterday in uh, Germany, I believe, so Switzerland. So uh, we're happy that uh, they're here to uh, to be with us and take the time to meet with you. So um, I'm going to introduce the head table. Beside me, I have Catherine Pendrel, Emily Batty, Derek Zanstra, Raphael Gagne, and our head co and our head coach Dan Cruz. So. Uh, without further ado, I'm going to uh, uh, ask a few questions to each team member and then we're going to open it up for uh, uh, for questioning on the floor. Uh, Dan Crew, as the head coach, uh, what are the team expectations here uh, for these Pan Am games? Well, definitely we have uh, one of the best mountain bike teams in the world and our expectation here is, is obviously to go for a win. Um, however, what our other focus is that this is a preparation for real and, and we want to do all of the little things right, mastering the process, the fundamentals, so that Rio is successful next year. Um, we've brought an incredibly accomplished team here, um, a lot of improvement and, and uh, incredible achievements over the last few seasons and I expect Pan Ams will be no, no different. Um, they're, they're really flying this year, these four athletes, and uh, we're, we're super excited to see how Saturday will go. Thank you, Dan. We just announced uh, earlier in the spring a partnership with Bear Mountain in Victoria as a national training center uh, for uh, the mountain bikers. Can you tell us about uh, how that came about and what it means for the future of mountain biking? Well, for the future, uh, you know, definitely we're looking towards uh, 2020. We have a national training center at Bear Mountain in Victoria, British Columbia, and that is our, our official new high-performance training center. Uh, just started this year. And so in the future, our, our best riders will, will be coming through that, that uh, channel in preparation for games like this. And uh, they'll be following in the footsteps of the great examples that these four have set. Thank you very much, Dan. Uh, Catherine, uh, uh, competing on home soil in Canada, uh, obviously your resume is outstanding. Competing at home uh, in front of your fans, what, the, what does that mean for you? Sure, yeah. Um, I'm really excited to compete here in Canada because it's an opportunity f to connect with all the, the Canadians that have supported me for so many years and uh, you know, are always sending messages on Twitter and Facebook. And it's a chance for young Canadians and uh, to, to see what we do on the bike and hopefully be inspired. And uh, hopefully that'll give us a little bit of an edge on Sunday. Uh, Catherine, you're familiar with Pan Am Games. You've won in 2007. Uh, quite a few years ago, but uh, tell us about that experience and uh, and how you've uh, you learned from those Pan Am Games. Sure, I, I got to go to uh, the Pan Am Games in Rio in 2007. It was my first games event, and the Pan Am Games, they really are a mini Olympic, so it was a chance to go and to see what a games experience was all about. I had the honor of being the very first gold medal of the games, and it was for Canada, so that was that was really unique and special experience for me and uh, definitely it meant that when I showed up at the Olympics in 2008, I felt like I had done the games before, I felt like I belonged there and I was ready to go. Perfect, thank you. Terry, you grew up on these uh, very same trails uh, around Hardwood. Uh, tell us what it means uh, for you to race in front of your, your fans and your friends and your family. Yeah, you know, it, it, you're exactly right. It's not just a Canadian thing for us. It's um, For me personally, it's uh, like true home soil and this is the course that I've been racing on the longest. Um, I think my first race there was when I was 10 years old so believe it or not that's 17 years ago. Um, <laughs> but uh, what, a, what an amazing experience. Um, you know taking all these games and really learning the process because it's exactly like the Olympics um, but to have it on home country and home soil is uh, it's, it's a really amazing feeling and it's a really good vibe like even getting into the airport and um, you know, seeing all the other athletes in your, you know, your, your local airport, it's just a really special event. Um, and it, it's, it's, it's huge, like, um, talking to, like, media and stuff, it's, the, the city has really gotten behind it. Um, and it's really amazing just to see so many athletes. And, uh, yeah, having that home country advantage is, uh, hopefully, like Alex said, and out on, uh, on the race. I'm going to go off script a little bit, and uh, you were one and two at Commonwealth Games, uh, Catherine and Emily. Tell us about the strength of the women's program uh, in mountain biking. The women's strength in mountain biking goes back for a couple generations now, actually. So 
be part of that is is uh, is really um, inspiring to me actually. Uh, and Catherine and I, like I said, we've been able to um, to gain the, the number one ranking in, in uh, the world actually for our country. And um, just to be part of that and race against each other um, is going to be pretty eventful, hopefully. <laughs> but um, but really amazing and uh, what a great experience. Just as background information, Emily won national championship at Hardwood in 2013, and Catherine won in 2014 last year on the same course. Uh, so, uh, uh, Derek Zanstra is uh, no stranger to uh, Hardwood as well, the facility. Uh, he's won about uh, six or seven Canada Cup events as well as national championships there in 2013. Um, Derek, uh, uh, the course, you know, every rock, every route, tell us about uh, what to expect on that day on Sunday. Yeah, in the past they've been very successful there, and I'm hoping to keep that going. But uh, it's uh, the course has changed the last couple of years with the funding that they got for Pan Am Games. Um, they've added some new features and made it a little bit uh, some rock kind of features for uh, spectators. Hopefully that uh, that all works out for us comedians who know the course very well. Uh, yeah, it's just great being at home, kind of like that. I know it's still three hours away from my house, but I consider it home because I've been racing here forever, and. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's good that my family can actually come and see where uh, what I'm doing, and uh, and other people from home can actually see what I do now. So this is great. Thank you, uh, Rafael. Um, this year you're leading the U.S. Cup. Uh, had very good uh, results at the Canada Cup as well. Won Trombone. Um Can you tell us about your season so far and how you're feeling heading into uh, these Pan Am games? Absolutely. So uh, I, I'm just off from the U.S. Cup series, which I've taken the overall title, which is uh, awesome. I mean, uh, I got my first U.S. Cup win with the season opener uh, earlier in March in California, and uh, the final was last week in uh, Colorado Springs, where I took my second U.S. Cup win. So that's the first, plus all the the overall. So I'm uh, I'm feeling strong. I've had a very good beginning of the season, and uh, the Europe. Uh, World Cup campaign was was good a month ago as well, so I'm feeling uh, strong and confident, and uh, obviously uh, really excited to be here for the Pan Am Games. It's my second game. Last year was my first game with the Commonwealth Games, and uh, talking about uh, Ardwardale's, uh, it's not home but almost second home. It's uh, it's one of my favorite uh, worldwide course. Uh, probably my f favorite uh, Canada Cup course. Um, just so flowy, so fast, so. So fun to ride, and the vibe vibe over there is very good. So I've been always uh, really excited to go to Ardwood. So, so yeah. <coughs> Perfect. Thank you very much. We're gonna open up for questioning. So, uh, uh, Dan Rapp from the Canadian Press, uh, would you like to ask a question? Yeah. And please identify which yeah. athlete. Catherine, please just talk. To, I mean, you talked about the advantage of being at home, but I'm wondering if that increases the weight of expectations as well. Sure. You know, um, I think. The weight of expectations is always what an athlete can put on themselves. But definitely when, whenever you have the opportunity to win a medal, there's more pressure on yourself. But um, you know, it's, it's seeing those pressures as an opportunity. And I think I've learned from uh, the Los Olympics and the World Championships that have followed how to, to manage that pressure and to really make it, as our coach Dan said, about the process. And if you go through the process and what you need to do to perform at your best, and if you're capable of medal and you're doing the right performance things, then that medal is possible. It'll hopefully happen. And if I could follow up, talk about the advantage of hard work, whether that is one court advantage for you. Yeah, I mean, for myself, I've actually raced at Hardwood a limited amount of times. I, I think when I raced there last year was the first time I was back in 10 years. So um, it's not a course that I'm super familiar with, but I've, as a World Cup racer, I've had so much experience just going somewhere and having to learn that course. And if you want to be best in the world, then you have to be able to adapt your skill set to every course. And uh, so I think even though Harvard's not familiar, I've had enough time there. And just the, the relaxed feeling you get from being in familiar territory. Well, Alex, you're a Toronto star. Um, for the rest of the week, I guess you guys are going up to Barry after this. What sort of things are you guys going to do before the race day Sunday to get ready to, I guess, expect the course and stuff? Can you take us through what, what comes up before race day? <laughs> so usually uh, before the race, uh, if we arrive early enough, then we can get a couple of laps early in the week, uh, kind of learn our lines, really pick through it. 
there's multiple line choices, always uh, different features, and you can time them, see which are faster, uh, which are less likely to make mistakes on. Um, you really start looking at little details like that, even where you can pass on the course, where you get a drink, etc. Um, and then as we get closer to the race, we usually have a you know a, a typical routine that we do before all races, where either we race on a Sunday, we take Friday kind of as a rest day, and then Saturday we do a pre-race routine of like either a lap easy, and then we do a race simulation lap, or sometimes it's vice versa. But Friday we take do the same thing, we do the race lap, and. Um, kind of confirm everything and then take Saturday as a rest before the race, depending on what everyone wants to do. But a little kind of leg openers and then, uh, and then you know, we're confident of that choice. We know which tires to choose from, uh, which bike we're going to ride, et cetera. And uh, it's just, uh, yeah, you do your homework before it and you should pass the flying colors. Another one, Alex? Um, you maybe like more, do, you, do any of you guys have like a personal like, night before the race? Routine that, that you can share with us. Uh, the night before the race, I always do, when I go to bed, I always do, uh, I guess, a mental rehearsal of the race. So I'll go through and I'll, in my head, be racing the race exactly as I want to do it. And, you know, right down to if I were to get a flat tire in a certain section, how would I handle that? Or, you know, how would you handle diversity? How will you ride if everything's going perfectly to plan? And I find that doing that, I know that I've done my preparation, I'm as prepared as I can be, and then I sleep like a baby. <laughs> Patrick Long, Chinese News. Uh, for the head coach, how do you expect the final result for this game? How can you prepare for it? How have we prepared for the final result? Yeah, Dan, um, you want to take the microphone, please? Sure. Well, um, in mountain bike, we, we you seldom can figure out their predicted final result, but uh, we, we are aiming to win, as I said, and, and the, the way that we do that is by making sure that we've got all of the tiny details in the course mastered. Um, these guys are, are phenomenal at, at picking the best line on the course, uh, knowing the fastest way to get through each corner, um, through each technical section. And it's, it's all those things, plus the, the huge amount of mileage that these guys have put in in preparation for the games that, that will win us a medal. So, you know, the, the question is, is, is all that going to be good enough on race day? And, and knowing these four, I would suggest that, that we have a very strong uh, potential to, to win the race and, and perhaps take more than one medal in each category. Another question? Uh, it's okay, go around. Oh, we're, just, we're gonna go through the attendance list. Uh, these gentlemen came in early, so they, <laughs> thank you for your patience. Uh, Mr. Langley from the Toronto Sun. And for you, Dan, um, you talked earlier about how this is going to be a key prep for Rio. I wonder if you could get into more detail about that and also explain where a Commonwealth Games fits in the Olympic quadrennial for your sport and how it may be significant that way. Well, um, Pan Am Games are definitely um, a significant event for, for our program. Um, there are a lot of strong riders in the Pan American countries, so we expect uh, some good competition out there. Um, you know, when we're when we're preparing for Rio, a lot of the the um, game success hinges on on being uh, the most prepared for the Olympic environment, and and the organization of the Pan Am Games has set up a a perfect simulation for the Olympics and most things are exactly as they will be in, in Rio. And so for us, it's, uh, you know, we travel the world together and we're used to functioning in our in our own way within the mountain bike team, but now we're part of this great Canadian team and, and we're one cog in that big machine. And so just being prepared for all of those types of things and, and just the, the expectation and atmosphere of, of uh, games, it, it just heightens the, the level of magic and the, the fun factor for us. So. Just being used to all that again, and, and you know we're we're about uh, 390 days away from Rio, so this is a great little warm up for us. A uh, question for Captain and Emily. Obviously, you two had uh, sort of different experiences, memorable experiences in London, um, the, the way things turned out. I'm wondering what you learned from that, and how it made you stronger because you've gone on to great success since then, and maybe how the London experience will help you for Rio next year. Sure. Um, the I have a lot of experience with high pressure events, but there's nothing quite like a games event in terms of the pressure you put on yourself, the result focus of, of that kind of event, 
And you know, I think I felt a little susceptible to that in London, where it became very much about a medal, and uh, that didn't allow me to find my best performance on the day. So from that experience, I've I've realized, you know, you've you've heard it as an athlete talk about so much time about focusing on the process, and that's really what I was able to come back to last year, and what helped me win the World Championships last year is focusing not on a result, but on the performance that will help me get that result, and hopefully I am able to maintain that headspace going into uh, into Rio next year, and uh, that's why having a, a home games is really important preparation for us because hopefully when we do go to the Canadian team does go to Rio, we're going with medal potentials, and you know we've, we've had all the experiences of what it takes to actually perform at an Olympic event. Just, um, did, so is it fair to say that London made you stronger? Yeah, in a in a in a tough way, <laughs> tough love. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like you every every race I do, I'm still learning. Even though I've been racing World Cups for nine years now, so uh, every every little experience I'm taking it, I'm storing it away, and, and hopefully able to use it at some point later in my career. Emily, I think it was the day before you were injured. Is that right? Yeah, it was uh, actually two days before. Two days. <laughs> so tell me, I mean, how how you reacted to that, and how maybe just. How disappointed you were. In yeah, you know, um, we talked about you know the process and learning um, experience, and, and we really do. I mean, as athletes, that's what we're we're doing every single day is is adapting to um, what's thrown at us and trying to bring it back into what we're used to, or just simply molding with what we're thrown what's thrown at us. And um, the Olympics, I was definitely in the best shape of my life, and um, and that I think was the biggest heart wrench for me. Um, but perseverance, I think, is the bottom line that I think I learned, and hopefully, you know, the ones around me. Um, that bottom is not, you're not in the bottom forever. Like, as soon as you hit rock bottom, um, things get better and things turn around. And uh, yeah, I think perseverance is the best thing because I was not expecting that. I don't think anyone was ever expecting that, um, but it does happen and uh, it does happen at a very important events. Um, so it's really just dealing with that, moving on, um, and then, uh, yeah, just looking forward with the, the next game. From Switzerland yesterday? Um, oh, you too? Okay, so I guess maybe either of you how, how grueling is that? I mean, is, or is that something typical that you would, you would face on the World Cup circuit? I mean, you guys have to race here in a few days. Is that something that you can recover from adequately? Um, well, actually, I, I flew to Holland for a, a, a personal team um, product launch on Tuesday, or Monday, actually. So that is something that we also have to get used to. It's hard with training because you want to stick to your routine, but um, yeah, go, go, go mid-season is kind of typical. and. Um, just finding the rhythm with what opportunities you are given midweek um, to get back into your uh, routine and um, yeah. So basically, the bottom line is yes, travel it's is normal. Is, is normal. <laughs> yeah. um, just trying to find you know ease in the in the airport and uh, um, save energy where we can so we can still perform on, on race day. Thanks, Andrew. Thank you for your patience. The floor is now yours for My questions. Pleasure. So it's actually to the guys. I know the ladies are the people to be beaten. And so that's they are the competition. Who do you guys have that you have to beat? All the other countries. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty simple. Um, there, there's some strong riders, and uh, you know it's kind of interesting because I'm even looking at the results from the World Cup there and seeing who I'm going to be racing against and kind of seeing what fitness level they're at. A bit of a different style. There's a bit of elevation there and some uh, high heats. We might have the same thing, but I'm not sure if it was dry heat there or not because it wasn't in Switzerland. But um, yeah, it's, uh, there's some strong guys, and uh, it's always hard to say. You never know what's going to come from uh, South America. Those guys can be on our game or not. Um, in the past, we've raced them at home here, and uh, you know we showed them who's boss. But uh, <laughs> we don't know. Uh, we don't know what will happen for uh, major games like this. So. Okay. I would agree with with what Derek said. I mean, uh, there's a few South American countries that are pretty up there, but they don't travel so much as much as we do, so we don't know. And uh, whenever we go down to raise them, like they're in like home, home advantage. So uh, hopefully home advantage here uh, play in our favor. We're confident that course suits us and uh, temperature-wise, uh, humidity, everything. And um, well, we know about the North American uh, athletes that are going to be there, and we're confident we're strong, strong team. I think awesome. something that's about a Pan Am event is that for the, the North Americans, we travel a lot to do World Cups, and that's where we're qualifying for our nation Olympic points. But for the Pan Americans, Pan Am events are a huge deal, so they will be bringing their absolute A game. 
whereas we might have also been focusing on qualifying for nation points uh, on the World Cup circuit. So I expect to see the Pan Americans will bring their absolute best, and uh, it's just always a nice challenge. Is there a particular competitor that you think is going to round out the podium? Um, you know, in mountain biking, the U.S. is amongst the, the other strongest nations, um, but uh, there's a woman from Mexico, Daniela comes out, who is also very strong and uh, hopefully will be in the mix. Nice. Thank you. That's it. Is there any uh, last opportunity, last question <coughs> you want to you want to raise before we, uh, we end the formal part of the conference? Going once, going twice. All right, so the team will now uh, sign uh, for, the, if you want to take photos, they're going to sign the jerseys. The jerseys that we're going to be wearing at these uh, Pan Am Games, they're uh, designed and produced by Louis Garneau, which has been a uh, partner of Cycling Canada for uh, the last 35 years, since 1984 at the Los Angeles Olympics. So. Uh, it's a stunning brand new design, uh, limited edition for these Pan Am games. So the team will take the opportunity to sign those and uh, we're going to take some photos. And after that, we may compliment with uh, little one-on-one -on -one interviews if you, uh, you want to add some. Thank you very much.